Okay, so I'm going to walk through this real quick. We are not done with this problem, but I'm going to walk us through up to this point. Um, we are trying to create this kind of output for this kind of input. And the way we would do that is we need, well, we, we're going to use in this case, variable names for first and last name for office, total sales, which would just be the sum of these, and then average sales, which is just uh, total sales divided by four. And then we need a range because we're iterating through this range currently selected, and I'll tell you when. Okay, so we're going to start in A1, which is just cells 1, 1, just setting our starting position. Then we're going to do something until the active cell is empty. In this case, so if, in this case, what we're doing is we're going to do something for this whole range of stuff, and then we're going to hit down, down, do something for this whole range, down, down, this whole range, etc., until we get to the very end, control end. And here's this last one here. So when I hit down, down, well, the active cell is now empty. And according to our code, do until is empty active cell. That means once this active cell is empty, don't execute any more code. Um, and so we're good at that point. In fact, what I'll do is after this loop, I'll say uh, cells 11.activate again. And that will reset our starting position. I'll also tell it to beep so that it tells us when it's done. Now, what am I doing inside here? Let's go back up to the top. What am I doing inside? I'm setting what F name and L name are equal to. F name's just going to be the active cell, but one column over. So in this case, here's the active cell, and is the F name. L names are just going to be one over and one down. Same with office, one over, two down, or two down, one over, I guess is the way the order it's in. Then what we need to do is get total sales. To do this, we have to set total sales equal to zero to start, so it has a common starting position. And then, for each cell, in what range? This range, which is just active cell down three over one, active cell down three over one, and then dot end down. So if I do that, go one, two, three, over, and then control shift down, that's the range we're looking at. So I'm saying for each cell in that range, say the total sales equals itself, plus whatever the cell value is. So for the first time through, it's going to do this one. It's going to say 0 plus 0, or 0 equals 0, hmm, total sales equals 0, plus 9127. And it's going to say total sales equals 9127 plus 13118, and so on and so on. And that's how far we got. So let's carry on from there. Okay, it's still recording. Um, the last thing we need to do is after this for each loop, we need to calculate average sales. So average sales equals total sales divided by 4. This is assuming there are always 4. So what if there aren't 4? Ooh, we better do this differently. What if there aren't 4? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, right here, below total sales, I'm going to set a new variable, a range variable. Um, quarter sales something like that, equals, yes, it's going to equal this right here. Control C, Control V, and then over here I'm going to put quarter sales. And now you'll see why. Give me a sec. Dim quarter sales as range. Okay, so we're doing the exact same thing with our for each. It's just we've specified a range using a variable instead of saying the exact range. And now, if we didn't want to divide by 4, we could do something like uh, quarter sales dot count. I think that might work. Let me try something real quick. If I do selection dot count right here. Uh, so, question mark, selection dot count. Yeah, it gives us four. Cool. So, quarter sales dot count should work. If it doesn't, we'll come back and troubleshoot it. What that says is give me the number of objects inside of quarter sales. Count the number of objects. And so, let's say we only had three quarters. It would divide by three this time instead of by four. If we had seven quarters somehow, um, or nine pieces of eight, uh, we could divide by the right number. Okay. Here we go. And then, after we've looped, we just need to print it out in the right place. Where do we want to print it? 
Well, we need to start over here in D2. This is tricky. If there's something in D2 already, it's super easy. But if there's nothing in D2, if we hit A1 control down, what happens is it goes to the bottom of the spreadsheet where we don't want to start printing stuff out. So what we have to do is say something like this. If, nope, inside the loop, if range D2 dot, you know what you could do, is empty, if is empty, is empty, range D2, then, and if, else, okay. I just stuck this in here. So this is again inside the loop still, but after the next and after we've posted, or after we've given a value to average sales. Okay. If D2 is empty, then do some stuff. Mm. Cells. D is mm, two here, or row. We're going to want row two, comma, column four. This will work. Dot value equals F name and space and L name. That should help you with the homework tonight, too, by the way. I'll explain. Yeah, so the two quotes is an empty set of quotes with a space in there. So I'm just saying for this first one, for example, it'll be and space Hannah. Um, and cells 2, 4, that's cells row 2, column 4. In this case, it's D2. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm using cells because once we do... We could do, we could do it either way, actually. Yeah, you know what? That'll make it simpler. Let's do that. Range. D2. I know you already did it. It'll work either way. But there you go. I changed the range to two. Nothing. If we were to throw this in a loop, I'd want to use cells, but um, I'm not. So. Cool if we did it that way. Oh well, it's all good. Yes. Ah. Um, yeah, we can copy and paste. Oh, oh, from, yeah. could you copy and paste Anne over here, Hannah over here? No, because you can't combine those. Yeah, so that wouldn't work. Okay, let me put range back in here. Sorry, range, D2. Okay. So, equals that. And then I could say range D, or, uh, not D, but E2 is equal to uh, office, right? Range F2 is equal to total sales. And range G2 is equal to average sales. Make sure I got those right there. Yeah, G2, yep, okay. There are better ways to do this, but this will work. Didn't we? We did. Up here. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this will only happen when D2 is empty. When it's our first time through. If it's not our first time through, which is every other time, we're going to have to do something else. And that's where the else comes in. Okay, else, it's got to be like this. We can make this super easy. Ha ha, go like this. Control C, Control V. Instead of uh, D2, go D1, E1, F1, G1, and do a dot end on each of these. Dot end, 
down. I'm just going to copy that over. Cool. Hmm? Yes. But it's dot end. There are so many ways to do this, but this is one way. So check out what it's going to do. If it if D2 is empty, it's just going to place all these in row two, right? Um, otherwise, it's going to go to the top here and say go down. Ah, aha, uh -huh. good catch. Dot offset. One row, no columns. Thank you for catching that. No, this will put them in the right place. So I'll show you. So it's going to go control down and hit and Hannah at this point. And then it'll go offset one and paste all that stuff in there. And then it'll do it again. Except you wouldn't want to because then when you do a control down, it'll stop every time. Yeah. This will actually work, I think. I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. So. Very important lesson, save before you ever run a sub-procedure. Save so that if it destroys your workbook, you can just close your workbook and not save and then reopen it and get back to where you were. So I'm going to save and then I'm going to get rid of this area here. Yes. You can also, if you want to be safe, uh, add a, right before the end of the loop, add do events, and that will let you break the code, uh, break out of the loop. If you end up in an infinite loop, you'll be able to break out of it by hitting escape twice, or by going up and hitting this stop button. If you don't put do events in there, it'll just never let you process it, the, the stop. It won't let you process that. Yep, do events, all one word, right here. I'm going to F8 through this. Anytime you're doing a loop, I highly recommend doing F8 through it instead of just hitting F5. Um, so let's try this. F8. It's jumping to the beginning, sets those values, gives us a range, and says, you can't do that. All right, debug. Says, you can't do this. So I'm going to say, set quarter sales equal to that. See if it lets me do that. Hey, let me do that. So instead of saying quarter sales equals the range, I said set quarter sales equal to the range. Yeah. Okay. F8. And it's calculating this. And now let's see if this worked. And Hannah. Let's push this down. F8. Yeah. And now let me try it again. Nope, it's not going to work. Who knows why? It's not going to the next one. So, stop. Okay. If yours is in an infinite loop right now, hit escape, escape. Okay. So, what do we need to do? We need to go down to the next one. So, after this, after the do events, you know, after the end if, we would say active cell dot end down dot end, oops, not dot activate, dot, dot end, down, dot activate. So we end down twice, and then activate it. Yeah. Or you could end down, dot offset, two, and that would work the same. Okay, now it should work. I'm going to save it, and then be risky, throw caution to the wind, and press F5. Now, I already had Anne Hannah in here. Um, I'd have to delete that to make it all pretty, but hey, look at that. Now, we might want to check our calculations. So, if I were to sum up these, should equal 34,806. 34,806. Average should be 87,015. 87,016. Cool. It worked. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop recording right now.